thank you for coming on. Blessings, blessings. I pray that this blessed Tuesday find many of you with many blessings. Greetings from the Most High. Hey, blessings. Thank you for joining. Please share with your followers. Tap that screen. Give me some hearts. Give me some love. Top, top, top. Top ministry. Check in, check in. Fine. Hey, you guys. This is a topic that I believe needs to be addressed based on a conversation that I was in yesterday. And the Lord began to speak to me concerning this today. And so I was really pondering on this for like the most part of the day. And I just said, you know what? Let me just go on Periscope to talk about this thing. It's really been on my heart. And so I want to talk about it today. Cheating ministers of the gospel. Cheating ministers of the gospel. Let's talk about it. Let's just get cheating ministers of the gospel let's talk about it i should have put hashtag deliverance scope because this is you know really tied to deliverance and the ministry of deliverance and so um just yesterday i was in conversation um just yesterday i was in conversation with a sister of mine and you know she was devastated that she found out that uh, a sister of hers you know, and her husband, like her sister, a, a, a sister of hers, husband left her. Um, and what happened is she was real devastated about that. And, you know, the other sister was like, you know, how could this happen? Given the fact that she is a prayer warrior intercessor and her husband is a minister of the gospel. And so to be blindsided by this is just. I know for a fact is devastating now my husband when I was going through my husband was not a minister of the gospel but I was and so even that in itself I was like devastated like you know I felt some type of um, sense of entitlement that how could that happen to me since I am a woman of God you know like I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be protected from the plots the plans and the schemes of the enemy like I have some kind of a shield around me that nothing is going to happen nothing bad is going to happen to my family like you know it was devastating and so over the past two years I've you know the Lord has really opened my eyes the Lord has really opened up my eyes in a sense that let me tell you something this whole cheating and adultery is not limited to the unsaved or people outside of the church it is very heavy inside the church i'm talking about anointed ministers of the gospel men and women are caught up in adultery and here is the thing what a lot of us think and a lot of you know i i believe that um the church has painted a picture that we are so holier than thou that it, it cannot happen to people who are saved and this alone this trumps, you know, it trumps over the fact that people are saying um, Christians cannot have demons or Christians, um, sister, I can tell some stories, <laughs> you know, people, people of the gospel, oh, Christians is no way a Christian can have a demon. There is no way the Holy Spirit and a demon can be in the same temple. And you know what? This really puzzles me because if you have people that you see every day, you know, they are saved. You know, you know for a fact that, listen here, I know this person is saved. I know that they're walking upright, but you see them living in fear. You, you see them having anxiety. You see them negative. You know, the, de the devil does not walk around just looking like a drunkard or a prostitute or someone who was beat up and overthrown. That's, that, that's just not the face of the enemy. And so many people only recognize and only know the devil in one of his, um, one of his characters or one of his faces. People are automatically assuming that, um, to be demonic, um, 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 um hiding in the church a lot, absolutely. To be demonic influence is only homosexuality. You know, the devil is a liar. And I believe within myself that uh, if the church itself don't stop with this foolishness thinking that we are immune to sin, 
if they don't stop with it, many people are going to come up on the day of judgment and they're going to find themselves not entering in. And so, and so as I was talking with this sister yesterday, you know, just, just, the, I, this isn't, I didn't talk this about it, but I just started to think about it, you know, because we are in church and especially you have, you have pastors, wives, you have ministers, you know, um, um, elder this, elder that, deacon this, thinking that, prophet this, prophet that, evangelist this, and evangelist that. And because, especially, I'm, I'm talking about from a woman's standpoint, what I've seen. And I've seen women, because they know that their husband are a minister of the gospel, they think that they should put their um, prayer concerning their husbands in park. And and so and so they they automatically think that you know they see a sister they counsel a sister when she's going through in her marriage and automatically believe that it can't happen to her because her husband is a minister of the gospel. The devil is a liar. And so the Bible says that listen here, sin is crouching at the door. Sin is crouching at the door, but we must over um 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 we must we must rule over it. And so it does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you come from. You could be pastor. You could be in church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday. Sin is still crouching at your door. And here is the thing. The enemy is only looking for one door to get in. And, 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 and one door can allow the enemy to come into your life, into your pastor's your husband who was a pastor, your husband who was a prophet, your husband who was an who was an evangelist, your husband is a teacher of the gospel. The enemy is only waiting for one door to open in his life, and the enemy will come in, the enemy will plant seeds, the enemy will make the way for other demonic spirits to come in. And so here is the thing I said before as as women. We have to be proactive in prayer. Now, I know that a lot of people who are following this ministry or marriage ministry, they may be, you know, following me because they are having issues in their marriage. But let me tell you something. I encourage women, if your husband is saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, I'm talking about speaking in tongues, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, and they are recovering, I still encourage you to pray and war for your husband's life. To pray, come on, better pray harder for him. To pray and war for your husband, because let me tell you something, not because he is saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, that means that he have a, a one-way <laughs> Like, like he, like he's already saved. So his seat is secure. Let me tell you something. Blessings to you. There is no seat that is secured in heaven. My seat is secure. I have to work on my salvation daily. And so when the Lord opened up my eyes to deliverance, listen here. I don't play. I don't play with that. You see somebody calling up deliverance. I on the pulpit like I am at the altar because guess why I don't know what's sneaking and I know flesh flesh will allow something to come in you look at somebody wrong listen here the enemy is using that opportunity to come in next thing you know you start thinking things next thing you know whatever is in your head downloads into your heart and you feel so strong about the situation next thing you know what is in your heart is become your actions and so we have to be at a point where deliverance is key in our lives. Like, listen here, when you see me go and pray, I, I do, even, even as I intercede and I pray, you know, on, on behalf of other people, there are some times that I just go inside my prayer closet and I start, I run in true self-deliverance on myself. I said, I often do a soul check. To make sure that my soul is in check. And although I know the Lord has delivered my marriage. I know that I have fought a battle. And thanks, thanks be to God for victory. Let me tell you something. I am still alert. I am still alert and praying for my husband. Covering his mind. Covering his actions. Covering his tongue. Let, making sure that, listen here. Whenever the enemy tried to come in somewhere, I didn't got it covered. I am waiting for the enemy no more. And so many women of God, and especially in the church, when they, and, and, and here is the thing. 
here is the thing. Women of God in the church, husbands start messing around, husband and start cheating. Then what? You putting on this face as if ain't nothing happening. You putting on this false hope in the church. Like, listen here, my husband is perfect, our marriage is perfect, ain't nothing going on here, everybody else have a problem except us. And then, and then too, when your husband done explode or when he up and leave, then you lay it in shame, because why? You don't, you don't put, you don't paint this picture for all this time. You, you, you don't paint a picture that everything is perfect with you. You know you hurting and you trying to minister to other people. It's okay to seek help if you having issues in your marriage. It is okay to seek help if you see your husband um, uh, uh, having these attitudes like, Lord, where did this come from? It is okay to do it. Because guess what? I've seen people over and over. I'm talking about sisters in the church. Because they are now that you know we don't act like we and whole saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, and better than everybody else. Then when your husband step out of you because you are overwhelmed with shame, then what? You stepping outside the church now and you resent God. Come on. Come on now. My God, my marriage in shambles now. Now you upset with God because you shame. This, this shame wasn't brought on by God. This shame was brought on by you because you failed to admit or seek help for your husband's issues. Some of y'all know your, your pastor or evangelist also get anger issues. You know this man. You married to this man. This man minister in the gospel and you know he have anger issues. It's okay that he's a minister of the gospel and have anger issues. Then you know how to pray. You, you don't just cover up and, and go about like normal business. Come on now. You know your husband looking at pornography. You, you know he have a problem with his eyes. And he looking at women in the church. You don't just sit there and act like it ain't happening. Come on, face this giant. Deal with this devil. Round up the intercessors and have them pray for the man of God. Or have them pray for the woman of God. So that the gospel will not be put to shame. Come on now, we as men of God must take responsibility. Absolutely. We, listen here, this is why I love the ministry of deliverance. And I pray that the church embrace it more than anything else. Because what the enemy is doing, we, we're, we have this argument going on in the church. Oh, deliverance. People in, you know, they see in deliverance going on. Oh, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this. Listen here, forget it. If we cast it out demons, let's cast out demons. Everybody don't cook steam the same way. Come on now, separate three years, still married, no holiness, need God, yes, for yes. Yes, 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 I pray that you seek and find the Lord. Come on now, we, we too busy arguing about what we believe in the gospel. Everybody don't cook mac, um, um, macaroni and cheese the same way. Everybody don't fry chicken the same way. Come on now, at the end of the day, what we just, what we getting? We still getting fried chicken. We still getting mac and cheese. So why are we in the church? We have to debate the gospel. Oh, I don't believe this. I don't believe that. Like if somebody getting delivered, who cares what you believe? Who, who cares? If my, if, if my method is to slap somebody on the head and yours is to snap, slap someone on the belly. Who, it, as long as the demon getting cast out, who cares? We must die daily, absolutely. We must go through deliverance daily, absolutely, man of God. This is a daily walk. And let me tell you something. I've had my share of deliverance, but I still ain't. Listen here, I, first of all, I didn't know that the devils was in there in the first place. Like, like seriously, like, like I'm not talking about... I am not talking about, like, I know I was saved. And I don't need nobody to convince me of that. I know I was a woman of God. I know I was saved. I know I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior. I know I was filled with the Holy Spirit. How do your spirits get in? Like, I ain't trying to debate nobody who's talking about, oh, how could, how could de um, um, demons and, and, and um, the teaching will make doctrines fall apart? Listen. I ain't debating with nobody if a, if a Christian can have a demon and I as a Christian and I had one. I ain't debating that. You think I'm debating that? 
Come on now. And I see, listen here. For those of you who do not have a copy of my book, do purchase a copy um, when wives fight families win. See, I'm talking about this not because of what I've seen. I'm talking about because of the position that I was in. I was a minister of the gospel. I was ministering to God's people. I'm talking about when I dance, people are moved by the spirit. But because I was hurt, because I was going through with my husband, I stepped outside the will of God. I cheated on my husband because of because I was hurt. And I continue with the face that I was listening. Okay. I continued with the face that I was ministering the gospel. And let me tell you something. The, the most deceptive, deceptive thing is, is that you ministering the gospel and you seeing people move by your ministry and you, you know you're doing mess. You think you okay. You know. You know if you die today that you're going straight to hell. You know that. But the enemy done deceive you and make you think because you don't minister. Come on now. I'm real with myself, but I understand that I can't give room to the enemy. Absolutely. Like, 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 listen here. Don't be deceived because you, 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 you minister in the word of God with, with, with anointing, with power. But you out there still doing mess. Listen here. Don't be the one that the Lord say, Lord, Lord. The Bible say, not all that say, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Don't be the one that is saying, Lord, Lord, and you can't get in. The devil is a liar. I heard someone say this before, and, and listen, it's always ringing in my ear. Say, the, the Lord is the only boss that will fire you and allow you to keep working. Come on now. He is the only boss. The Most High is the only boss that will fire you. And have you keep working. So you out here ministering the gospel. With anointing. Come on now. Preaching the pulpit down and fire. But the, 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 the Lord has already departed from you. The devil is a liar. And so I want to encourage um, 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 those of you in ministry. Those you in ministry. Your husband in ministry. I want to encourage you. Pray for one another. Don't, don't, don't do your wife as if. Listen here, she'll never do this. Like she is a preacher. My wife is a preacher. She will never do this. Oh, my husband is a man of God. He is saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Your husband can do one thing that will allow the enemy to come in. One thing. When the enemy comes in, he, it ain't going to be an overnight destruction. See, the enemy don't work like that. The enemy is very strategic in everything that he does. And I see this in my life. The enemy ain't just up and my husband started cheating. He was planting these seeds from long ago. He was working on my husband's head from long ago. Before my husband actually stepped out. Long ago. From he was a child, my, my, my enemy is working on my husband. Long ago, your husband ain't just, you know, people, are, oh, I don't know where this come from. And then when, and then when he done cheat on you or when he out there, then he starts saying, oh, I, you, you did this and you was always controlling and you was all, the enemy was planting that long time ago. The enemy is planting that in his head. There were moments that, uh, how did I miss this notification? <laughs> The enemy was just working on him, and it was just, just a time where he broke down your husband's spirit to the point where your husband was more weak in the spirit that he couldn't give in. That, 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 that's where I stood. That's what my testimony was. The enemy didn't, I just didn't up and cheat on my husband. The enemy was playing on my mind for months. The enemy was showing me, oh, but why are you over here? Come on now, why are you over here uh, uh, serving the Lord? This is what your husband was doing. While all these men looking at you and nothing after you, you saying no, but your husband out there doing it. Listen here, I ain't even this stuff, but I used to hear in my head. I used to hear this in my head. Oh, as beautiful as you look, you preserve yourself for only your husband. But he was out there chasing after other women. 
That broke me down. That broke me down. That broke me down. Until I was at a point where, you know what I said? I remember I was at a point where I said, listen here. The enemy done been feeding lies in my head long time now. I'm telling you, it ain't just happened overnight. Long time, the enemy's done feeding in my head. It was already playing in my emotion. My heart was already broken. I was already upset with the Lord. Listen here. I couldn't even fight off a feather. I was so weak and broken at that time that when the enemy came in with the fatal blow, like I just couldn't resist. It was like, it was like listen here. It, it, I was with my husband for six years, marriage, five years, um, dating him. And I'm telling you, in high school, like, I would have guys, whilst my husband was in college, and it was coming on to be strong. Oh, I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. And look here, I've had no problem giving them a hand, like, step off. I ain't into it. So what? Like, get lost. Six years into marriage, you know, of course, it's normal. I I don't boast about it, but I'm a beautiful woman. People looking at me, you're so beautiful, and this thing and the next thing. That never got to my head. Listen, that went through one end, came out through the next. But it wasn't until I was hurt and broken that it really affected me. I'm telling you, it was like I didn't have the strength to even swat a fly. I did not have the strength to swat a fly. And even when the Lord told me, the Lord said, don't do it. Like, I was like, God, like. My husband didn't care when he was cheating on me. Come on now. Someone said, get delivered before you get married. I would listen here. Get delivered before you get married. That's true. I, could, I was like, listen here. I was already broken. I was already broken. The enemy is very strategic. And so you have to be careful. Even in ministry, you could be side by side with your husband in ministry. I mean, you travel in the globe, he travel the globe, y'all travel in the globe together. But keep the man of God covered in prayer. Continue to war for his salvation. Man of God, continue to war for your wife. The enemy is roaming to and fro the earth, seeking whom he may devour. He is looking for somebody. Ladies, men, women of God, we ain't immune to sin. We're not immune to sin. Don't think that. I don't care where you, I don't care how mightily the, the, the Lord uses you in the season of your life. I don't care how much you prophesy. I don't care how much you speak in tongues. I don't care how much you deliver words of knowledge and words of wisdom. You are not immune from sin. It could happen to you. It could happen to you. I just, let me tell you all something. I came from a family where, listen here. I was trying to get on dating sites and trying to track men down. God blocked it every time. Praise the Lord. I was, I, I, my, my, I came from a family, listen here. Cheating is the thing. Like I was, I used to tell some of my cousins, like, look here. I serious, I, I'm glad I related to y'all because I wouldn't want to buck none of y'all. Like y'all is a mess. Y'all have no heart. Like, why? Like, you have a, a, someone that, 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 that loves you and, you know, honors you. And, like, why? Like, you just do like, it's just, like, it was no sense of commitment. My brothers, like, no sense of commitment. Like, like seriously. And I, and me, I look at them like, listen, hey, you all need to do better. And just turn around and, and do the same thing that I despised. Like, seriously. I wasn't even married to my husband and I never cheated on him. I never thought about it. I never even was tempted. But the moment that I was hurt, the moment that I, the moment an uh, open door to my soul opened up, and, um, uh, um, the moment a door opened up to my soul, listen here, I forget how much I hated cheating. I forgot. It wasn't even, it wasn't even in the forefront of my mind. My Lord, we are not immune from sin. We can fall at any time. Don't think, that's why the Bible says, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to. This, 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 this trial that I've gone through in my marriage, it was a humbling experience. It was a humbling experience for me personally, you know, overall as a wife, but much more to me personally, because I understand, come on, take heed lest you fall. I understand that I will not listen here. When I tell you, if I see a woman cheating on her husband, I will not speak down to her. 
I would not feel like, oh, this woman, this or makes you more compassionate. Absolutely. I would never look at a woman or a man of God and turn my nose up to them. Even if they preaching the gospel, my thing would say, Lord, the first thing I would say, and, and, and I've seen it, men and women of God, I was like, Lord, help them. Lord, deliver them. Lord, open up their eyes. Because I know for a fact that the enemy has taken a hold of them. You don't know what the open door was. You don't know why. You don't know what they have gone through. That's why I said, listen here, you can't judge people by what you see if you have never walked in their shoes. I don't judge. The, the Lord had to humble me. I don't judge people. I do not judge people. I had a sister. She, after, you know, she and I was very close. And after a while, she came to me. She said, she said, Meltoria, I want to, um, she said she wanted to tell me something. And I know she's saved. Me, she, me, she and I worked in ministry together. I know she's saved. She said, you know what? I've been struggling with smoking. I was shocked. Because I, my mother and father smokes. Like I could smell smoke from two blocks. That's how strong my nose was. But I couldn't tell that she was a smoker. She said, I have been very good at covering it up. She said, but at, at the time, I think that it was like a month before or a couple weeks before, she said, but the Lord has delivered me. I removed the taste out of my mouth. And she says, for some reason, I wanted to tell you that. And it was, it, it was just an eye open up to me to know that, listen here, Christians struggle too. Christians struggle. There are Christians out there struggling with something. It may be something in the mind. It may not be a sin. It, 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 they may not have, have stepped it on their husband or may not have stepped it on their wife. They may be secretly drinking, secretly smoking, secretly um, um, uh, uh, watching pornography, secretly. This is why the Bible said that we have to pray for our brothers and sisters. We have to always pray for them. We have to always pray for them in the faith. We have to war. We can't just... We can't just speak condemnation who are we to condemn who are we to condemn your spot on the on the on the 545 flight 260 on the way to heaven is not guaranteed it is not and so and so pray for the the ministers of the gospel we as the church we have to pray for them that deliver the gospel we have to pray for them because the enemy is seeking Come on, Paul addressed they were believers. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we have to pray for the ministers of the gospel. And I'm talking about men and women of God. People that you listen to on Periscope. If you're going to be listening to them, you need to cover them in prayer. If you're going to be listening to these people, I don't care who they are. I don't care what gift of the spirit they move in. I don't care how powerful they look. Pray for them. They are not immune to sin. They could fall at any time. You see people all the time. You see, you see men and women of God being consumed by greed. Money. They all of a sudden now they, they are lovers of money. Next thing you know, they move in heavily in the gifts of the spirit. Then they then they then they look like they prostitute in the gospel. Come on now, this didn't happen overnight. This is this did not happen overnight. We have to pray for them. Men and women of God, those who are deliverers of the word of God, the gospel, we have to pray for them. We have to war on their behalf. We have to, we have to pray that their eyes are open. We have to pray that the very trap that the enemy is setting for them, may the enemy fall into it themselves. We have to pray. We cannot be here speaking, oh, this person and this person get kitsch. This person, this person, ooh, this person leave their wife, they leave their husband. Listen here, we ain't got no time for gossiping, that's gossiping. We ain't got no time for that. This is the time to go in prayer. This, this is the kingdom, this is the ministry of the kingdom. We have to cover people in the kingdom, not, not just in our local church. People too caught up on what's going on in the local church. We have to look at the kingdom overall. The kingdom, what's going on in the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. And so I just wanted to come out here. And kind of vent a little bit because too often times we are not lifting up the people, the deliverers. Now, mind you, let's not, let's not, let's not make no mistake. The people that are delivering the gospel are no better than others. They are no 
better than the, the sister and brother in the church. But the thing about it is, is that that's who the people in the pew, they look up to the pulpit. They look up to the pastor. They look up to the evangelists and the prophets. And so it, it, it's like celebrities. They look up to them. You know, celebrities setting the trends. You see a celebrity do something foolish. You see everybody doing the same thing. You see celebrities start wearing one something. Everybody wearing it. So it's not that they're better, but they are examples. And, 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 and women of God out there, men and women of God out there, stop putting on this show like you better. Like you ain't having issues in your marriage. Come on now. Trendsetters, come on, Kel. Don't stop putting up, put, stop putting up on the show. You know, like, like you, you ain't have the anger problem. Stop acting like you know how to talk to your wife. Women of God, you know your husband don't know how to talk to you. Don't act, don't go out here, oh, he, you know what? And then the thing about it is, you're always parading, but he know how to treat me. Oh, he, my husband know how to treat me. My husband know how to treat me. My husband, like, if you keep on ringing out in my ears, like, I have, I, I looking at you funny because why you have to keep saying it? Why, if, if you, if your husband is treat you right, why you have to keep on saying it? Let's just live this thing. We ain't got to keep on parading. We ain't got to keep on pronouncing it. Okay. And so, and so, so that we, because we, the social page is a whole lie. <laughs> oh gosh, Kel Menes. Come on now, par par parade and then get divorced the next year. Your marriage perfect on social media. Oh my gosh, somebody come for these too. But we have to stop putting on the, the example. We are, we have to be accountable for the lives that we are wrecking because we are painting a picture, the, a false picture. The picture is false. You having issues in your marriage. Don't act like everything good. Expose that demon. Take off the head of the serpent. Come on now. Deal with that. It's okay to get help. Because what you, you're doing more damage than good. Covering it up. You're doing more damage than good. I've had people tell me, woman of God, the congregation do not know we're having issues. They do not know that we are on the brink of divorce. How how hurtful is that to the body of Christ? How hurtful is that? You 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 following these men and women of God. You look up to them next next thing, next six months, they separated. Next thing you see the man of God with another woman. Next thing you see a woman of God then then picking up the house. You cannot conquer what you cannot confront. Absolutely. Good evening, Reverend Chick. Thank you for coming on. Come on now. How, how devastating is that? I mean, for me, I, you could, I could, you could, come on now. Can you see me, man and woman of God, and then two weeks they separating? I mean, we ain't see no fight. We ain't see no argument. We just see shambles. We only see the end result. We ain't even see the beginning in the middle. And next thing you know, the church whispering. Oh, I didn't know they was having problems. Woo, 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 woo. Come on now. You saw a front. And and then and then when we have the people in the congregation start to have issues, shoes if pastor them can't get over it. What are, who are we? If if pastor so and so and, and first lady so and so, if they get in divorce, shoes. I probably the best thing we could do. See this is this is why I posted this about, you know, people talking about godly marriages. People talking about godly marriage because they look at, okay, this man is saved, this woman is saved, godly marriage. And then when, and then when it's a split, when there's a divorce, oh, probably that ain't the one who God have for her. Or probably that ain't the one who God have for him. Well, what kind of mess is that? You mean to tell me that the Lord gonna allow his children, come on now, to be in a marriage eight years, ministering the gospel in the church. And that ain't who they he have for them? I mean, it don't make no sense to me. Uh, it's just me personally. I just stand on that. It don't make no sense to me. That's why I believe within myself that finding a mate is a matter of wisdom. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that God don't have somebody out there for you. But I believe there is a pastor in my area got another woman pregnant. Oh, God. Oh, well, see, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> because we won't confront the demon. 
the pastor's wife, you saw it come in. You, you know your husband was doing some unscrupulous things, but you won't confront it. My Lord, I believe that there is wisdom and fine in a mate. And I believe there's godly wisdom. I believe that you should pray and ask the Lord, Lord, is this someone who I should marry? Is this some? I believe that you should consult the Holy Spirit. I believe so. But I don't believe the Lord can have, to have you testing the whole supermarket before you find the right one. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that, 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 I believe that women make mistakes. I believe that men make mistakes in who they marry. I just had a bad choice. It's like choosing a fruit. You go onto the market and you, you don't test it. You don't test it and, you know, I, I do it all the time. Listen, I look at couple, um, um, supermarket sweep. <laughs> Come on now. I, 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 I look it in the market. I look at the onions. I look at one or two of the onions and look, they look good. So I fail to, to, to examine the rest of the onions. When I go on home, some of the onions rotten. My mistake, oops, my bad. I choose the wrong path. It was just a lack of wisdom. It isn't that, you know, okay, now, now you could take the onions home. You could test them and then if you think about it, you carry them back. I don't believe it's like that. I believe you use wisdom and finding your mate. If you already marry, now you have to walk for your husband. For, for, for him to be who God created him to be. We, 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 we about this whole, this, this one ain't for me and this godly marriage is in here. And you know, people getting excited because their husband pray over them. No returns. You know, my husband is pray. Ooh, my, I, I worry him about that. My husband is pray for me in the night. My husband is pray over me. My husband is be up praying for me. I had, listen here, come on now. And then we automatically think that he can't sin. Come on now, walk for the lemon you choose, so make lemonade. So now I heard this because he prays and he fasts. You automatically think that's it, like you reach. I'm sorry if I go on a little rant, but this needs to be addressed. Come on now. We, we, we need to address this. We are not immune to sin. Not because this man is a pastor. That means that he can't be out there, he can't commit adultery. Not because this man is a, is a pastor. That means you don't need to war on his behalf. That don't mean you must war for him to have wisdom. Come on now. That, that don't mean that, that you're off limit to that prayer. That don't mean that you, that's not a prayer that you have to worry about. You have to continually guard. Guard your family. Guard your husband. You got to stay on watch. You got to stay on watch. Come on now. Come on now. Take heed lest we fall. Take heed. And so when you see, uh, uh, you know, when you see men and women of God, you ain't devastated as if you ain't no hope for the church. <clears throat> Solomon was wide and he still fell into sin. Come on now. How many men of God in the Bible fall to a woman? David, a man of God, a man after God's own heart. David was a man of God. He said, the Lord said, this is a man after my own heart. Yet he was he, 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 lust. Come on now. Lust of the eyes. Cause him to fall to sin. To commit murder. Is this not enough examples for us? Are we what, what are we what exactly are we looking in the word for? We can't just look for the juice and the sugar and the sweet. We can't come on now. Come on now. We we have to we have to understand this. That the enemy is out there waiting. Of course, he ain't attacking the world like he attacking the church because they're already going to hell anyhow. So why he gonna waste time on them? He ain't trying to bring down those who are ready sin. He trying to bring down the people in the church. He trying to bring down those who are those who have been bought with the blood of the Lamb. That's who he trying to take down. He ain't trying to if if you already going to hell with him, why he ain't even waste no time? But the moment that you find salvation, the moment that you try to walk upright before the Lord, it's on. It's like marriages. People, people will be, listen, I've seen people in marriage for a long time. They had a good, not in marriage. I see them in relationship for a long time. For a long time. I see people in 10-year relationships. I'm talking about girlfriend, boyfriend for 10 years, fornicating. I mean, committed to each other. The minute they get married, five years in the marriage. I'm like, I don't understand. You could fornicate for five years, but you can't be faithful for five. I just, I, I, come on now.
I just don't understand that. You could be committed to a woman. You could be committed to a man for 10 years outside of marriage, living in sin. But you can't keep that commitment to him because you marry? Something wrong with that. Is something wrong with that? And we have to pay attention to these things. Okay? And so and so listen, I just want to encourage and those of you who watch my periscope, you may be a minister of the gospel. You may be a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist, a teacher, whatever you may be. You may be married to a apostle, a pastor. Listen there, war for your husband. War for your husband's soul. To make sure that he do not fall in the traps of the enemy. The enemy is setting traps for your husband. The enemy is setting traps for your wife. Oh, they're getting set. Them traps getting set. Just pray that they don't fall into any of those traps. And then we won't be surprised. Like, like how, 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 could, how could my husband cheat on me? He, he was a pastor. I had, a, I had a wife tell me, woman of God, I just don't understand. My husband is speaking tongues for hours. I say, that don't mean he have a, a, a one-way ticket to heaven. Come on now. So anyways, rant over. Pray for your husband. I ain't not even pray for your husband. War for your husband. Continually. Not just... You know, people even get tired of war, and I don't, I've been praying for two years. Uh, the Bible says that we ought to always pray. The Bible says we ought to pray without season. Like, don't stop praying. Always pray. So, this limitation would be putting on prayer. Where we get that at? I've been praying for two years. Prayer should be your lifestyle. You shouldn't complain about how long you've been praying. Because you should never stop. Would you, you tired, you ready to stop praying? Oh, the enemy waiting on you. My Lord. Anyhow, you guys, 24-7, that's right. You wash your dishes, you pray, you're mopping, you pray, you're sweeping, you pray, you're bedding, you pray, you're on the loo, you pray. Come on now, and especially mothers. While you cutting up them onions, pray. You ain't got to go on your knees and pray. Come on now. While you're driving, Pray. Maybe whining for two years. We ain't always praying. <laughs> Anyhow, guys. I think my scope been on for a minute. So let me get off here. Blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you for joining. Please share with your sister. Please share with your brother. I believe this is a blessing. It will definitely open up some eyes. That we are not blinded to the plans and the tactics of the enemy, especially in the church. That we don't think because we um, we are underneath the blood of Jesus that we it's some kind of potion that 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 immunes us to sin. It's only um, not 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 even only because I don't want to make it sound as if the blood of Jesus is not that great, but the blood of Jesus is what that we are using to counter. To, to conquer the enemy, the blood was shed, and we do not have to fall in the in the in the traps of the enemy. The Bible says that sin is crouching at the door, waiting, right? But he said that we ought to rule over it. We are supposed to rule over it. When you when you get the temptations to sin, you're supposed to rule over it. You're supposed to have dominion over it. You you should not be defeated by sin or by the enemy because you have dominion power over it. That's all. Anyhow, blessings to y'all.